thank you so much, Nuket and Philip. You really broadened our minds and gave us new ideas. Uh, case uh, videos, video cases, is not something I use, but I'm very excited about using them in the classroom. There's a lot of questions. Uh, I guess they uh, mostly deal with the uh, uh, use uh, in practice of video cases. Uh, our colleague Arif Zaman asks, uh, what is the uh, appropriate uh, type of students? I mean, does it matter whether you have undergraduate, graduate classes? And in this case, he's dealing with low income students. So does that matter? Uh, George uh, Carniero has a related question. He says, I have about, you know, one hour class. So is that a long enough period to do the video cases? Maybe you can talk a little bit about your experience, about the ideal circumstances, uh, types of classes, types of students uh, that would lend the uh, video cases uh, to be very worthwhile pedagogical tools. Well, it was, uh, let me go first uh, to answer uh, Arif Zaman's question. Uh, as I mean, as far as I know, from my own personal experience, uh, especially with uh, students that have uh, experiences, that have work experience, these cases work much better because they can relate it uh, better uh, due to their own work experiences. Uh, when it comes to uh, low paid workers uh, and uh, undergraduate students uh, that are uh, maybe older, uh, again, if they have for mature students uh, with uh, low income backgrounds, uh, it could be a good idea, especially if they've got some work experience, as I said, they can relate to it better. But for digital technology, uh, whether or not if they are not able to uh, have access to internet uh, at home, uh, maybe it might be a good idea to use it within the class environment. Uh, different countries, Kenya, Pakistan, in an IB class at university there. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I can talk from brands whispering experience. And I can say that, uh, for example, our cases are uh, quite popular in India uh, and, 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 and also in Pakistan. Uh, but apart from that, you know, that's, all ex that's the old experience uh, I have. I don't know what uh, Philip would like to add to it. Yeah, I think that um, in this respect, in terms of low income backgrounds, um, I'm not sure if you mean access to uh, the videos. So um, I have received many uh, emails already from people from developing countries when my videos will be ready because uh, they will be open source, so free. So students do not have to pay anything uh, for access. So I think that in that respect, it's important. Um, in terms of where they come from, uh, could of course have an impact on uh, what they find interesting. Uh, but we have some cases, for instance, from Eastern Europe, um, also where, you know, context and institutions uh, might be different, uh, although they might not be, you know, similar to, let's say, Kenya or Pakistan or Jamaica. I do think that uh, some of these uh, uh, contextual settings um, might be related by the lecture, of course, um, to the case. So I think that that's an important realization to make. Um, these cases do not run by themselves, right? I mean, uh, you are still an educator. It, it is up to you as a lecturer to use them in proper ways. Uh, so it's, uh, it's up to you to um, clarify and elucidate uh, what it could mean or what it should mean to certain students. Because I, I agree that sometimes it, this is not uh, straightforward or forthcoming. And so uh, it's true that um, uh, you as a lecturer are a little bit, let's say, the intermediary, the in-between, between the case and, and, um, uh, and, the, and the, uh, the, the students. Um, perhaps if I can already pick up on uh, George's um, uh, question about the effort it takes to uh, change a, a regular PPT into um, a, a knowledge clip, for instance. Well, I think that the most important aspect um, is the script writing. So uh, when you typically do a, a power presentation in class, you know, we all know that we sometimes uh, make it up as we go along. Um, our, our explanation is not always crystal clear and perfect at every occasion. Um, so when you do uh, this knowledge clip, obviously it needs to be because 
it's going to hopefully last for some time, especially if it's uh, you know, a, a certain theory or a certain framework, you're going to hopefully use this for quite some time. Uh, so uh, it does require some sort of uh, um, uh, preparation to have the script writing for these uh, knowledge clip in place. Um, and so this might take, let's say, 75% of your time. Uh, when the script is ready and your slides are ready, then you can record them either in PowerPoint um, and I can make available you know, a, a procedure if you like uh, on, on, on Cyber's website uh, how to do this. Uh, you can also use, of course, uh, um, more uh, advanced uh, software that is available. For instance, uh, a program like Camtasia, which my university subscribes to, but I can understand that uh, some universities uh, uh, would not have this. But again, um, the typical uh, PowerPoint, um, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, does have this available. I, I think that also Nuket uses this uh, extensively. Um, and so uh, to prepare this, uh, um, um, uh, a knowledge clip will take you some time, especially the first one, admittedly. Uh, there is some learning uh, going on, but it, it is quite steep. So once you have the knack of it, uh, uh, you've learned it, it, it will go uh, quicker. But the first time you have to uh, take into account at least uh, a day or two to, uh, to do this. Um, it's going to take some time in the beginning. Uh, if I may add? You can, uh, if I may add just very quickly, I think the good side of it is that once it is done, you can use it many times over. Yes, you put a lot of effort maybe in order to be able to produce it in the first place, but then afterwards you can use it in multiple occasions. Yeah, and if there is enough interest, we can actually schedule another uh, session where you can talk about how you produce a new video case because you have a lot of experience, both of you, on that. Uh, there's a question from Monica Semenyuk, uh, uh, more of a technical question about blending the video case into your learning management uh, platform. Uh, she asked, can you play video uh, during a synchronous class using Blackboard Collaborate? Yeah, that's a good question because if you use um, a PowerPoint presentation and you have to upload it in uh, uh, Blackboard Collaborate, it's true that the video disappears. Um, but you can uh, use uh, the video in a different way. But then, of course, it's not like you um, have, let's say, a um, PowerPoint with a video included in it, and you have to show the video, let, like, let's say, separately. Uh, so it's true that uh, using it in the PowerPoint is difficult in, in uh, Blackboard Collaborate, but you can use it, let's say, separately. Uh, uh, using, you know, uh, just playing the video, let's say, um, uh, using uh, Blackboard Collaborate. Um, of course, coming back to the first question that we answered, um, I think that it's important uh, to use also uh, this, the, the streaming um, um, methodology in uh, Blackboard, uh, because otherwise uh, people have to download it, for instance, and it just takes a, a, a tremendous burden on the university system, but also on people's, um, on students' um, infrastructure. So it's better to use a streaming methodology um, uh, than, you know, having this downloadable uh, video, uh, which is uh, too, too big, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about the use of transcripts? Uh, our own colleague, Murad Dartley, uses video cases successfully, but he says, his experience is that students also like to get hold of the transcripts uh, and any data sources uh, along in, in a hard copy form. Is that your experience? And is, do you, do you uh, advise that? Yes, I mean, in general, yes, especially lecturers also like to have uh, transcripts in order to be able to work over them. Uh, in our case, uh, we have actually, as part of teaching materials, we also supply the uh, PDF versions of the uh, video cases so that there's some written material to, to go over. Same with Multinationals Whispering, we will be including the transcripts of those video cases in a PDF format once they're finished. Uh, and they will again be freely accessible uh, from Multinational Whispering website. Yeah, because it's, it's important to realize that in a video, you know, you sometimes see things or you hear something, but you can't remember exactly where it was at. Um, and that's the advantage also of also having transcripts of, of having, let's say, a, a regular textual based uh, video uh, 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 case um, next to the video case, because then you can quickly, you know, scan over the text and see what was said at what, what point. So it's easier for students 
uh, to find information. It's true. You know, there's not a question on this, on assessment, but it comes to my mind. What has been your experience? I mean, how do you do the assessment of performance by students individually or as a team on video cases? Does it involve any complexity or do you, do you, have you designed something different and new for assessment part? It could be in, done in two different ways. One is uh, lecturers can actually use their own usual way of assessing uh, without really involving the, the information given in the, uh, in the case. Because as I said earlier, the, our aim is not to teach the case itself, but to teach the textbook information. So uh, lecturers, whatever way of assessing, you know, you, they, you, they can stick to their usual way of assessing or else uh, they can actually uh, uh, ask questions uh, from the teaching notes, the audio teaching notes that I've mentioned, um, or from the knowledge clips that uh, Philip mentioned. Uh, there could be certain exam questions driven uh, based on those uh, material that, that is produced. Yeah, the, the thing that, you know, coming from Belgium, as you know, we are quite strict also, and we also have to, um, get students to act because students uh, typically uh, Flemish students are quite laid back you know they sit and listen they're not very active um, for instance when you form teams they could supply you with an answer um, of course this answer could be formative uh, you don't necessarily have to uh, check every word that they've written about you know uh, um, you know for instance relating back to my case uh, how would you internationalize this company the first time around um, and, and in subsequent um, answers uh, but they do need to supply me with some sort of inf uh, uh, answer, and this answer is is recorded uh, in you know in uh, formally. Uh, but of course, I, I do not really always um, evaluate it or assess it as such. It's more of a formative uh, based uh, um, assessment, let's say. Yeah, let's say uh, maybe uh, in a few minutes we have left uh, in the design of a course. Let's say a typical fourteen uh, week long semester course. Uh, is there an ideal number of case uh, video cases that you would incorporate into your teaching? Of course, the variety of uh, teaching uh, tools is, is always good. Uh, blending many, many approaches and video cases is one of them. Uh, so what has been your experience? Is there an ideal number, not too much, not too few, not too many? I think it will depend on the on the lecture and the the profile of the students because some students especially in my experience especially MBAs they really like uh, cases in general uh, and video cases uh, these days uh, but maybe for undergraduates uh, it could be wiser uh, to have maybe maximum three uh, during the whole uh, semester mm -hmm. uh, but again I think it really depends on the needs of the lecture and the and the profile of the of the students I think it for me it will be very hard to generalize I don't know what Philip would say yeah well um, I, I actually kind of like uh, this methodology uh, given that in my experience students um, when they read a case they haven't read it properly um, they often, um, you know, have to still look at the, at the text during class. So uh, I'm actually quite uh, disappointed often. Um, so I find that uh, this combination of video with also having some text, uh, which they perhaps could prepare uh, already beforehand, uh, works well. So I kind of uh, actually like it. Um, it doesn't mean that I have to spend an entire lecture on one video case, but I can use, for instance, only uh, one part of it. I don't need to use the, the four parts or five parts of a video case. I could use uh, one or another. For instance, I'm developing now one with, on, on Kipling, which is you know, the, the bags uh, producer. Uh, one part is on production and you know, contract manufacturing, but another one is on marketing and sales, and a, a third one is on digital marketing. So if you only wanted to focus on one, you could, you could select one rather than go through the motions of all of these uh, uh, parts. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, that's my experience. That's been excellent. That's been excellent. Thank you. Uh, a heartfelt thanks, Nuket and Philip. Uh, you have really added another dimension to our teaching toolbox.